on the Army. Oh, hello everybody, welcome to Twitch Novice. I am your host, Colin Connors. My wonderful co-host, Alicia Garza, is currently absent. She might pop in in a, in a little bit, but I'm not here by myself. I'm here with uh, Prince Ty. Good evening. The always beautiful Stephen Lehman. Hey. The very insightful Alex Cash. Hey. And our favorite guest ever, Billy Garcia from Survivor Cook Islands. Hey, Billy. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Actually, I shouldn't yeah. say favorite because we do have some other ones, but secretly you're the favorite. Anyways, we have a <laughs> whole, whole bunch of stuff to talk about. It was a merge, fantastic merge. Lines have been drawn in the sand. However, even though it seemed like it could have been a very chaotic episode, I think there was actually a fair amount of order and predictability to it, but we're actually going to dive into that today. So, Ty, I'm going to start this off with you. Okay. First thing we get is we get Taylor's tails being like, I'm going to get my revenge on Adam, all this stuff. Is, and then, or, I'm sorry, you had Hannah saying, I'm going to get revenge for Michaela on Jay. And we also have the storyline of Tails saying he's going to get revenge on Adam. Are all these players playing for revenge actually good survivor strategy? Because to me, it seems like at some point in time, you got to just play the game itself and try to get revenge whenever you can. Um, I... I don't know. I feel like those were convenient sound bites more so than anything, or at least it was with Hannah, because Hannah, all of a sudden, to her credit, your girl did well tonight in leaving herself yes, into did. a majority situation where she's not in any immediate danger. Tails probably meant it more so because he's a big dumb fuck, and to that end, he had to go and get himself marginalized. Um, but, but, you know, Hannah did well. And I think it was more soundbite right, right. situation because you needed some sort of resolution before they merged. Not so much with Taylor. But in the abstract, though, is playing Survivor as a game of revenge a valid strategy, or should you be much more live and let live? And I'm going to throw this to anyone who wants to I answer it. I think it all depends on circumstance. Yeah. In this particular case, I think it was dumb. Yeah. Well, right. I, Go ahead, Steven. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I was saying real quick, I don't think the bulk of it was I am actively seeking revenge. Mm. It was... I'm going to play my game. If I happen to get revenge as that comes along, great. Okay. At least in Hannah's case. And I feel like that's the correct way to approach it is if you have players that are blinded with this whole I want to get revenge thing, I think that could seriously actually limit their moves and potential. So oh, yeah, anyways, totally. all of that out of the way, we get the merge. Woo! Merge. So, Black merge buffs. Black merge buffs. Okay, Alex, I want to throw this to you. We merged at 13 players. Holy shit. Are you a fan of the big merges? Do you like them smaller? Is there any benefit to having the merges with 13? Because honestly, I actually think 13 just might be a little too much. Yeah, I think having a, uh, like, I'm okay with having a larger merge if it's an early merge. Like, because in second chances, the point of it was to get to the meat of the game, the individual game, as fast as possible. Here, the point just seemed to be you know, to have a 13-person merge because they did it after the halfway point of the game. And at that point, all the juicy stuff is going to be compressed now. All right. I'm not a fan of that. Okay, and Ben, do you have a comment on the 13-person per merge? Yeah, are you pro? Are you against? Because I, I, I would rather be a little bit smaller. I'm not going to lie. I'm very pragmatic, but it's very dependent on, like, the, the cast that we have. I feel for this season, it's a little bit too much, especially because you can play on the tribal dynamics that were established over the last couple of rounds. I feel like you could have played that a little longer. I don't think it necessitated a merge at 13 for this cast, no. but I feel like it's very much dependent on the season that you have. Well, and I mean, that's a good point. Second chances was they wanted to get to it right away, but it just almost feels a little bit inorganic, Stephen. I don't know. Can you... Yeah, can you no, my feelings? Can you I, argue I against them? I, for, from like a personal standpoint, I'm okay with big, mer not big, but like larger merges in a 20 person season. So, like, I, in a 20 person season, I guess 12 works for me, merge wise. Mm. As like a person who loves Survivor, I, I would prefer like 11 or 10, yeah. but like, I'm not like. I, oh, guess, I guess yeah. my fear, and Billy, you can kind of tell me if I'm right or wrong, about having these bigger merges, I actually feel like if there's going to be a 13-person merge, people might get into these bigger alliances quicker, and then we have a prolonging situation. I don't know. Maybe I'm just projecting insecurities. What do you think? Uh, number one, as a player, 
you get the merge bonus, so you get an extra ten grand to make the merge. Uh, and then, cool. <laughs> so you're like, I won't merge to be at nineteen. Damn it. <laughs> you're right, right. But uh, uh, um, as a fan, uh, I, I uh, actually I think the odd number merge is good. That it was an odd number. Yeah. That, of course. Uh, we so that we get like a, a, a swing player, a swing boat, a scenario, but. Um, I do think 13 is a big number. I would have liked to have seen it like at, at 11 at the earliest. But there might have been, you know, the, the producers have inside information because they see everybody's confessional. So they might have been out to try to save the interesting people. So you think maybe, oh, some tides have turned against Adam. And actually, we Adam actually, and Hannah. Adam and Hannah. And Hannah is very interesting. Ben, you wanted to chime in real quick before I move on? Speaking on the merge thing, the thing is like, I'm really a fan of like the individual game aspect of Survivor, and I think that that's a thing that a lot of Survivor fans look towards is the post-merge like yeah. individual game aspect of the game. I think that when it came to this season, it's too much because of the dynamics that are currently there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like 13 was too much. I feel like they do this two rounds later. Yes. It would have been something that was taken well off. But I think that I, a lot of people, I think the reason why you're seeing this trend of the merge coming sooner and sooner is because there are so many people that are looking forward to the individual aspect of the game come that comes from the merge situation. And just imagine a survivor season where there is no merge. There's just 20 people and it's an individual game right off the bat. What a giant clusterfuck that would be. So the next person I actually want to talk about is Taylor. So he was stealing a bunch of food and he was being arrogant about it. I want to hear, Billy, I want to hear your take on this first. Um, should Brett... Should they have called him out on it? Like, I don't, I don't know. I well, dude, those... Okay, I, I'm old school. I'm from season 13 of Jurassic era. Yeah. So if he, we were playing old school Survivor, when he left camp to, Ooh, with the yeah. food, we'd have grabbed like his socks, his underwear, and all his shit and threw it in the fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You take my food, I take your comfort. Like, it would have been an immediate punishment. Um, I, I just don't get it. Like, if you watch, like, if you remember Survivor Africa, one can of beans yeah, was enough beans. to take somebody out. Like, yeah. how is this guy still here after taking all that food? Maybe maybe it's because they're all well more fed than you guys were. And that's been an argument I've heard old school players yeah. make, is that these new school players, the shelters are a bit nicer, and there's just more food available. The amenities are just large, right? Maybe. And, okay, so Ty, from an editing standpoint, we're only going to talk about Tails right now. Any shot at all of him doing anything? Because tonight episode, it showed him as stealing food and it showed him being arrogant. We did actually get some good gameplay, though, with him and Adam, and that's going to be something we're going to flush uh, out. We did get a lot of good gameplay from Adam. Let, let me, let me not, not good gameplay, but we got to actually see more than just his dumb side. We saw him at least attempting to do something. His so that, not dumb side was still dumb. But that matters more. That's, more, that's, better, than, <laughs> that's better than getting nothing from Sunday, though, if you see what I'm saying. I mean, is he a character? Yes. Does he have any chance of winning? No. If he had any chance of winning, it was as Fabio. Fabio didn't steal everyone's food. Uh, so to that end, Taylor is no longer Fabio. He's a dick. People don't like him. No, he all a dick. Will. I mean, no, we could. Could, he, could he outlive Adam? Sure, because Adam's done terrible things, and we'll talk about that. That, but which and you, know, you this, we're actually gonna. I'm probably gonna come back to you on Adam because you're a big Adam fan. Adam's your guy. Oh, but I was gonna. Pick. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna bring this over to actually to Alex first to talk about Adam, which is okay. We got this great kind of CP confessional where Adam was explaining all the minutia of why it would be so important for him to go and tell tale tales that hey, I know you're stealing food, but I don't care. Mm -hmm. Seemingly forgetting though. That Tails probably fucking hates his guts. I feel like if Adam did this with any other player, that would have been a fantastic move, a great way to build a bond. What the? Why is Adam so bad and good at the same time, for lack of a better word? Like I don't know, man. Like I, I think, I think he may be, you know, logical. You, you know, be thinking logically to the point where he sort of expects other people to do the same. You know, th so there's there's some of you know not exactly taking into account who he's talking to, and I also do think that you know while that move does work on some people, uh, like the unlikely alliance, 
you have to play it better than that. It's like, and you can't vote out the other alliance. His best friend four a, days ago. A, there's that, but also B, you can't do it where it's like, you know, if if you agree to this, then I won't tell everyone what you just did because that feels like blackmail, and people will find. And that's a very good way to point that out. So I'm getting a lot of static from someone. I'm not sure who. Let me check. All right, it was actually coming from you, Ben. Uh, unmute yourself when you get a chance. Okay, but Ty, I do want to hear your Adam stuff. I know I just talked to you, but I want to just hear your take on Adam, kind of this episode, because it is so important to you. Then we're going to talk about you know other dynamics. Well, let's put it this way. I liked Adam early on because he was a super fan and seemed to know the game. He's also falling into a pitfall where, because he's a super fan, he thinks he knows things better than he actually does. And to that end, he's not reading context clues like, hmm, maybe I shouldn't spend 20 minutes talking about all the ways in which I screwed you, which he's apparently going to do next episode. Again, yeah. uh, um, you know, he, he maybe should. Yeah. Well, his move makes sense, if not for the fact that he knew from episode two on that he was on the bottom rung of the millennial group. All he had to do was sit on his hands, let Zeke do the running, and he would have been in a fairly good spot with an idol hidden. Instead, he just couldn't help himself. Exactly. And, and because of that, he's going to get himself in trouble, and he's probably gone in an episode or two. And I mean, I don't disagree with you. Steven, I want to ask you a question, which is, why are these super fans so fucking bad Spire? Because this is a recurring t trend we see we see people that are fans do well in survivor people like michelle last season who go hey i watch it casually then we have these super fans people like us we play and we're all garbage i mean i think billy would have the record of longest lasting if all of us were to play i think we would all be out episode one or two well maybe not me and uh, now i'm just being silly go ahead Stephen. um i i want to be we are, so we're garbage i like that's cochran i want to be able to give Took him twice. So. Some credit for like being out there, but like he, you just you see him make these pitfalls and mistakes, and for me personally, just like the secondhand cringe and embarrassment is very much there. Because as a super fan, you don't want to believe that you fall into these pitfalls or traps. Yeah. But like when you get in your head on the island, you probably do. Um, and so like to some degree, I empathize with Adam because like I can only imagine what he's going through out there. But also, it's like, ah, like... Well, well, well and I, I am going to throw this Billy. Billy, do you have a concrete answer why Superfans suck at Survivor and why and how that translates to Adam's game? Yeah, I, I think I fell into that same trap that I think of Survivor in TV terms. Um, what you see on TV is very much just a, a highlight, and it, you don't really get the transitional part of the game. Mm -hmm. The transitional part is really where you, you, you sway a lot of people. Um, and... Uh, you never see that in in, in, in Survivor because uh, uh, it's only an hour show. If we if we were to get a hour and a half or two hour episode every 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 episode, we probably would see more of the transitional part yeah. of the game. And then as a fan, you would take up on that. But as you know, I think the super fans are under the pre are under pressure to immediately mm -hmm. adapt their game to to real time Survivor, and that's a harder you know harder better said it's easier said than done. And I guess my follow-up question to you would that would be that I feel like with super fans, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Part of the problem is that when they go out there, they're expecting to play one hour of Survivor uh, like 18 times. But you go out there and you're there for three days before anything fucking happens. So I feel like a lot of Survivor is actually just not playing the game. It's literally walking to the tree mail, walking to the you know. It, am I right in that assessment? It's a lot of observation, a lot of quiet observation, and you don't get to take notes. It's all mental. Your memory is like it's like your 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 tablet out there where you put your your, your notes down and and you take your photos with it and, and take your videos. It's all in your head. So and, um, and so, I guess so another thing is that as viewers we see like oh my god these two people are going to get coconuts and they're also talking about strategy. Oftentimes people might just be going to get fucking coconuts and they're not talking about blindsiding everybody. Mm -hmm. So like we don't well, I don't think we fully get that aspect. As well, viewers. sometimes, sometimes it's not even it's not even that they're talking strategy. It's enough to make a mental note of how many times they hung out together, yeah. and then you're starving and you're dehydrated, you're weather beaten, and it's hard to keep track of all that in your mind. Your mind is is also playing tricks on you out there because you, you you hear every episode of every season about the paranoia. 
Oh yeah. So I imagine it's so, yeah, absolutely. I imagine it is. I, that's something I can't imagine. I know you. I mean, Billy, you lived through it. Alex, real yeah. quick, I want to hear your thoughts, and then we're going to jump on to the next topic. Uh, I think that the designation of superfan is one that sort of is selectively applied yeah. uh, through editing because, like, I think a lot, of, like, most of the people that have won this game after Fabio have been people who have watched the show a lot more so than just when they were in Hotel Sequester. They know what's going on, but we don't hear the word super fan from them. And I think, I think what's going on there is that, you know, it's a normal, like, like it's sort of an editorial statement saying, you know, to be a fan of the show, that's cool. We love fans of the show. Be a fan of the show. Watch the show. We want you to do that. But if you're a super fan, then you're a nerdy nerd who lives. And you have to, and you have to act a certain way. Okay, I do buy that. Um, so Ben, I want to throw some stuff your way. Can you hear me? Oh, I gotta figure out how to unmute Ben. Oh, he has to unmute himself. I'm unmuted. There you go. You're unmuted. So a quick question for you. We saw the Taylor and Jay conversation, which we all knew was coming because of the edit show that Taylor and Jay were close. Maybe Adam didn't know. And they said all this really important shit. And they never once looked over their shoulder just to see maybe if someone was standing there. And this is a recurring theme in Survivor, which is, what the fuck? Like, why why are people having conversations, really important conversations like that? Like, couldn't you stand, like, facing each other to where you're both looking over each other's shoulder? I don't get it. What... Why do people do that? Is it just clumsiness? Am I being too like, you know, they should know the game better? What what what's going on? There are people that are now recruited to play Survivor, and that is what is happening. <laughs> <laughs> when like when we want to cut it really down to the core, it's because people are not prepared to play Survivor because there are people that are playing Survivor that are not actually like aware of what survivor entails and aware of how you're able to succeed in the game of survivor because you're not a person that has watched survivor manifest over the past 16 years and i mean i guess that's somewhat fair but billy you want to chime in then i'm going to hit up ty yeah this is a logistical question this is um <coughs> most often when you see two players doing anything and they're not facing each other it's because survivor field producers Position them that way so that it's a good shot. It's a camera camera yeah. friendly shot. Well, so yeah, that's true. The like on the beach, good. yeah, when you see them on the beach in a V or standing in by the by the uh, by by the uh, uh, the watering hole in a V, the V formation is one hundred percent the field producer. That's what mm -hmm. we call it in, in behind the scenes. The V formation. And Billy, what would happen if, like, let's say me and you were talking, and I was like, "Hey, I want to look over your show. You look over mine. We're about to vote off Steven. And the field producer said, "Hey, spit out!" And I was like, "No, fuck you! I don't want you ruining my game." Would that would that work at all? That's a Sandra Diaz move. That's probably that's probably why she's won twice because she has a fuck you attitude towards uh, production more often yeah. than not. And as but, so, uh, okay, yeah, they they they're dicks about it. They're I'm someone production. who has been a set PA multiple times. I'm used to being told to fuck off, so I don't I don't think I would hurt anyone's feelings. Do you get told to fuck off a lot when you work in film? Ty, you wanted to chime in. <laughs> Well, we all know that I'm not surprised that Taylor made the classic blunder of talking, obviously, in a duo and getting overheard. I think it does speak more to what we've been seeing from Jay this season, where Jay has the tenets and the general concepts of how to be a good player. I have to make big moves sometimes. I have to look for idols. And he does these things somewhat competently, but he doesn't quite have it all together like a more strategic player like Zeke does. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, he went and found the idol and he had his buddy Will. He's his, like, literal, like, third leg there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, but he wasn't quite careful enough to hide it from Michaela. So and then he got paranoid about it. He knows that he has to make big moves and that Michaela is a threat. But he doesn't understand exactly timing and how that benefits him. Which him. I think in a way that's actually a more scarier player than someone that knows what they're doing. Because someone that knows what they're doing, like if they're thinking at, you know, level five survivor, I can anticipate that someone like him, I have I don't fucking know what he's gonna do. He's a Trump, you know, they kind of get no, it and they're also kind of shut up. Name. No. He's not don't no. No. My that's, metaphor that's my metaphor is they think they understand it better than they do and that causes a lot of problems. I don't I, 
Maybe. I don't I mean, Jay's a threat because he's a big physical threat and because he was obvious about running an alliance. I mean, that's that's why he's a threat. If you mean, if, if you think that makes him more dangerous, I would argue that makes him less dangerous than someone like Zeke because it made him very predictable because they knew exactly what they were going to do and they were able to surround them tonight. So to that end, I feel like that makes him less of a threat. That's fair. Um, but um, also a threat that will get targeted because he's not going to be able to save himself. And I wanted to throw something to Steven, actually, real quick. Steven, you're muted if you have a chance to unmute. Um, which is, we didn't talk about this. Real quick, the adamant advantage of taking someone's reward, I think it's stupid. I think it's pointless. Much like all this other extra shit they've been adding on, besides the uh, disguise, idols, and coconuts, I don't like how... So the, I don't like all the extra stuff they're adding. Real quick, I am. I had this thought when I when I saw the steel reward. I had a vision in my head of the producers in a room with like two separate wheels, one with a verb, the other with like a, <laughs> a thing. So like steal, double, uh, cancel, yeah. and then like vote, reward, vote, like, reward, like, yeah. And, so uh, it's like yeah, it's like a Mad Libs thing. Like, all right, Billy, I know I. I want to hear your thoughts. You played the game. How pissed would you be if someone stole your reward? And is there actually any strategic benefit to doing that? Because yeah. I think it would just hurt you. Unless it's no, the no, final no, three no, no, and you no. steal the food. No, no. I thought of – as soon as it came up with the with the, uh, with the, the, the twist there, I immediately thought of a, st a strategy okay. where, uh, where you, you know, somebody who, who wins that, um, that, that reward and they want to get a certain people alone or, or, or you're in a situation where – your your ass is on the on the chopping block, and you need to get certain people together. You steal the reward, and you get yourself together with those people, and, and you strategize. That's, That's good. How I would do you it. think the very virtue of you using a reward steal, you know, without people knowing you had that advantage, would that negate some of that? Like, oh, I can't trust them. They, I didn't know they had the reward steal. Nah, same thing as a hidden idol. Very <laughs> you can't fair. Trust somebody that's dead. Ty, go ahead. I'll say this. I mean, I agree with Billy a hundred percent. There are times where the risk of pissing someone off is less important than doing the game move that you need. And to that end, it can be interesting in that sort of way. Or if you're able to hold on to it long enough to get like an advantage, like towards the end of the game, like if it's the final reward, which is a challenge, like things for yeah. final immunity and you can use it or whatever the case may be. Oh, I don't think that's what they designed it for. I think they designed it to be up in a high place so that somebody tall Taylor would find it and just be like, Man, I really want to eat some more today. So they, they could start with him being more of a dick and just stealing somebody's shit and like the hilarity and so on. I guess I think like, that there is some strategy to it. I think they wanted a big dumb jock to piss somebody off. Okay, okay. But real quick, and anyone can have got it instead. Actually, Alex, I haven't talked to you in a while. Um oh, I just lost my train of thought real quick. Wait. What do you make of the idea of being able to steal that final four reward thing that gives you the advantage in the immunity – or the one that gives you the advantage in the immunity challenge? Wouldn't that suddenly make that really fucking overpowered if you could steal like, hey, you just worked really hard to win the thing at the final four immunity to where you get an extra ball if you're Malcolm or whatever, and suddenly you could steal it? What if that's what the legacy advantage is? Well, I mean, that's what we assume it is. <laughs> so what the fuck is this reward for? What if someone uses the legacy advantage and someone steals the legacy advantage? Oh, this is getting too much. Like, what what I'm gonna have to wait for is for this to come out on uh, CBS All Access so that, or, or you know, on on demand so that I can pause the video and read it carefully, because it it had all the information clearly visible for about a half a second. So I want to read that. And you gotta put that in your secret scene analysis. For those of you who don't know, Alex does do this fantastic thing where every week he goes through the secret scenes and tells us stuff. Um, people were saying that Michelle's secret scene last week pointed to her winning the game because her secret scene showed how crazy she was. Turns out those are wrong. Billy, did you have any thoughts you wanted to add on this? Um, on this like, on craziness the, of stealing the, the reward, the thing, and blah, blah, blah. You know, what I would love if, um, if uh, at the at, let's say the auction, somebody wins a, an advantage in a challenge, and then you play the steal the reward and take that auction item away from them. I, I, that's what I would love as well, if, if something like that. Because then, doesn't that person still lose their money? I guess. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. It'd be vicious. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. That would be vicious. But if it's you your know. ass on the line, like your neck, that'd be the, the, the way to play. And no, you know what? Like, you guys, this conversation has made me like the re steal reward just a little bit more. Just a little right. tiny bit more. Okay. 
So we get to the immunity challenge. Will wins. Will gets confessionals. Ty, you're the king of editing. Does Will actually matter besides his whole? No. I'm, I, I'm 17. No. I want to. Okay, I didn't no. think so. <laughs> right. So that's and that's is it, the reward challenge was cool. We all liked it, right? Were were we expecting yeah. temptations? I mean, yeah, I was hoping for temptations, but yeah, the challenges this season have been temptations. If more people lasted longer, but the, only two of them went a really long time. Yeah. So to that end, yeah. okay. So that's it's, all. Yeah, I feel like it's all you The weak sauce now, which is bad. I don't know. I, I think uh, someone like Taylor would step down for some nachos or something. I would step down for nachos because I love nachos. And I was having a medical What crisis. would you step down yeah. for? That's the real question. Yeah, what would you step down for? Billy, real quick, what would you step down for? Uh, I like would step down for for, uh, for uh, a 40 ounce beer and a porno. Or a porno match. <laughs> <laughs> would you be like, hey, can I go to the woods real quick too? Just. <laughs> I, I, I would be like, or, or you know, I'd probably pull a Rob Cestadino, like, all right, which one of you bitches are willing to lose your clothes to chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Nothing better than live porn. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> all right, so we got the immunity challenge out of the way. Let's talk about a little bit more of the meat of the episode. And, Steven, I'm going to yes. you to all this. What we saw is we saw the Gen Xers and the nerd the, – all the Gen Xers yeah. and the nerdy millennials, millennials get close together. Two questions, and I'm going to throw this to everybody. Yeah. Why was this alliance one? Why did the Gen Xers pick those millennials over, you know, Taylor and Jay? Because they could have gone either uh, way. And also, is this going to actually last? Um, I think they picked them because, one, it's a group of three versus a group of four. So assuming they take off the other group, it would be 4-3 instead of 4-4. Four, four. Mm -hmm. Second of all, just candidly, I'm guessing they would prefer working with Adam, Zeke, and Hannah than Jay, Will, Taylor. Well, really, Jay and Taylor. I'm, pr I'm sure they probably don't have any beef with Will and Michelle, mm -hmm. but I'm guessing Jay and Taylor are just too and, and, obviously close for them. Uh, and I think it's a fair point to point out that if the Gen X just had it their way and they pick off the Jay, Taylor, Will lines, that is true. They would have the advantage. Ty, what is your thoughts? Is this going to be a long-lasting Gen X's Millennial Alliance? And why did they pick those particular Millennials? Well, they picked those particular Millennials because they had to by virtue of the fact that Jay made it pretty obvious that he was going back to the Millennial crowd. He never had a great bond with Brett. Brett didn't do much to save himself so much as Jay talked himself into getting rid of Michaela. Brett wanted to work with Jay until Brett had eyes, at which point he was like, ah, okay, maybe I should see what Chris is doing. And Whereas Zeke actually gave a shit about his deal with Chris and actually gave a shit about his deal with David, which meant, by default, that's who they were going to go Real with. quick, and Brett did have a decent episode, or am I reading too much into it? Because I've kind of liked Brett this whole time. Yeah, okay episode. Yeah, I, will also, I will also say this. I don't think the exact formation of who voted for Michelle tonight necessarily sticks together for forever, because we all know that Jessica doesn't super get along with Brett and Chris. And, that, and I was just about to point that out. Tell people to go screw themselves whenever yeah. they want. You know, the, there's, there's a lot with There's a lot of that. moving parts. I, 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 oh, hmm? There's a lot of moving parts, as you would say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, so Billy, your take on it, and that's a very good point. Can you picture Chris and Brett uh, next, after they get rid of Taylor, being like, hey, Jay, me, you, Will, we'll try to grab Adam, let's try to fuck some shit up. Is that a possibility, or are, are these lines just locked in? Um, I think they're locked in for the short term, but um, uh, I think uh, that, uh, like, like, uh, like what was being said just now, uh, that uh, – it was it was sort of by default that this alliance got together. It, it was less to do with with what the Gen X had option wise, and more to do with with um, the cool kids not allowing the, the nerdy kids at the cool kids table, uh, pretty much. So that's fair. I, and, then, and but is that going to last though? Because I think it could yeah, last. Through, I think it could last through a J boot, or maybe a J and a Will boot, or a Tails and Will boot. But I think they're going to splinter off. Yeah. Alex, real quick, I want to hear your thoughts on this. Um, yeah, so I think I think what it was was that you know the the Gen Xers like they had three votes worth of division to uh, so, to sort of prove to everybody that they they were not necessarily going to be a tight coalition all the way through. Mm -hmm. Whereas 
you know, the cool kids made it more obvious. And so they painted the biggest target on their backs. And so the, uh, the most obviously non idol having non immunity having member of the strongest, mm. uh, Titus click was the one that had to go. But once they get down a number or two, you think it's going to look at the Gen Xers and realize they voted together for a couple episodes. I could picture Chris deflecting from that group and then Ty, real quick, you wanted to add into this before we start to wrap well, up. The simple truth of the matter is this. Zeke, I think Zeke's in a good spot. I think okay. Zeke is in a good spot with the Millennials. I don't think Adam is long for the game. I could see him going next episode, to be honest with you, because they don't really need him anymore. Mm -hmm. They don't really need him anymore because the three Millennial guys in the Cool Kids Club are probably lost without Michelle. Michelle was the smart one of them. Uh, so that's... to that end, they're just kind of sitting ducks. Adam could go. I think at some point you're going to have a Chris, Brett versus Ken and Jessica showdown. I think David's going to be in part important with that. Mm -hmm. David's relationship with Zeke is going to be important with that as to where all that's going to go. We were getting good vibes from Ken and not great vibes with Chris early on. It's kind of reversed now. It's going to be an well, exciting season. Well, I see season. Lots yeah, because Ken um, didn't have a single confessional last episode, and I don't think he had that many this episode. So I think maybe the nah. Ken edit is starting to turn around a little bit. And I like how you just kind of summed up where you thought the game is, because I actually am going to throw that to Billy and Alex. A lot of our other panelists have dropped off. Sadly, it wasn't the order in which we would vote them out. We would vote out Alicia first, then Ben, then Steve. Anyways, Billy, <laughs> real quick, wh what is the state of this game? And it, like someone like David, what is his path to victory? What is his path to 270 electoral votes or whatever, however you want to phrase it? <laughs> well, uh, I think Dave, Ken, and Zeke have the inside track right now, mm. but that's just right now. They you have the rust belt. Is. Yeah, they have the rust belt right now. Mm. But um, I was sad to see Michelle go. I think out of all the women on this season, I was quietly rooting for her the most. Uh, I, I, you know, and, and and I know you're a Hannah girl, Hannah guy. I am. But, well, Hannah's gonna win, so that's all moot. But anyways, go ahead. Uh, all right, all right. Well, but uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, when they voted her out. I was uh, like uh, inside my head. I was like, no. Well, well at, least my, at least my pick has a chance to win now. Yes, yeah. Well, no. the thing about yes, Hannah. No. Or, yeah, the way Michelle. Uh, sorry, the thing about Michelle is, I actually see her on a second chance ballot. And I think if she does get in the game, I think she is smart enough to improve. I actually think she's almost – she could be a better Sierra because I'm tired of seeing Sierra play. Sierra's playing next season. She's played too much. <laughs> I want to see Michelle learn and grow. Alex, your thoughts on the state of this uh, game and, of course, Michelle as well. Who's okay. looking good? And uh, too many dicks on the dance floor. That, that That is the first thought that comes to mind. Nine to three, I don't think it's ever been this lopsided before. Uh, in terms of in terms of gender dynamics, uh, the the bros, like I, I don't think challenge uh, challenge threateningness is going to play. Well, well, but not challenge this. But who do you think is standing right now? Because everyone's more of a threat, or at least that's the way they'll. But, see but it. Alex, just real quick, who is standing strong though? Who do you think is in a good position? Um. Well, I think the. Uh, I, th I think the nerds are in are in the best position because they are in a good position to take out the uh, the cool kids. And when there's a Gen X backlash, they'll be able to take advantage of that. And if Adam goes, then all the better for Zeke and Hannah because they look weaker. And the, and people have enough pre existing grudges that they're going to want to use them. And I, and I think that's fair. I feel like Zeke. Ken and Jessica right now are looking really good. I think that and I think they look really good in the sense that they have a lot of options. Not necessarily that everything's going to go the way, but I think if they play correctly, those three could do some damage. Ty, did you want to comment on that or Billy? Well, like, real quick? I'll, I'll mention this. You mentioned Ken and Jessica being good options. Neither of them got a confessional tonight, I don't think. And that's worrying. David that's did. David has been a big character all season. I think there's a possibility that he might be our winner because we know Zeke comes back. Mm. So that makes me wonder if he actually wins or not, despite the fact that Spoilers. he's doing well. Yeah. I think everyone that watches, if you like Survivor enough to watch the podcast, you know, Zeke, you know Zeke comes back. Right. Um, and real quick, I actually yeah. did want to address our spoiler policy. Here's the thing. At Twitch Snuffers, what I learned as a host, I look at who was on a cast, and mm -hmm. that is completely it. I do not look at any other information because – 
A long time ago, I had a bunch of seasons spoiled for me, and I refuse to look at any other information. And in fact, I no longer go on Survivor Stocks. I hardly ever go on Survivor Reddits. So I promise you, viewers and listeners, all I know about seasons up ahead is possible casting and maybe maybe a twist or two, because I don't like to know spoilers because they ruin all the fun. Real quick, Ty. Well, no, but I was just... Let's put it this way. Stephen Layman spoiled that for me, and I thought he spoiled it for everybody. So I apologize if not everybody here knew of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but the simple truth of the matter is that they didn't show Ken, they didn't show Jessica, they did show David, and David was shown in not as zany character light, but in a, I bet some scrambling is going to happen now, this seems like a thing that will happen, and then otherwise he wasn't shown looking stupid. And in fact, That's he was shown looking smart because he had the point of being like, wow, Adam's kind of being a flake. Maybe we should just get rid of him. Does it really and- matter if we do or if we don't? I actually wholeheartedly agree with you. That is a good. That's a good way to read the tea leaves. Of course, we don't know what's going to happen next week. Billy, did you want to comment on that? Yeah, just that. Um, one of the things I noticed was Ken. Uh, I mean, uh, Dave saying one of his uh, little sound bites was that he's reunited with Ken, and then that he's a, he's he he feels very comfortable with Zeke. So I kind of feel like he's the guy that pulls those two together, and then work from there. That's why I picked them as the guys that have the daylight right now. And that's very fair. And Ty, real quick, and we are going to start to sum up everything. Another thing with David, Chris mentioned to Brett that Chris and David were right. working together, which was never a thing I would have imagined the way that they had a relationship on the first try. Mm-hmm. So it looks like David's done a pretty good job in his That's fair. All right, minute. so before we wrap all of this up, this complicated, well, semi-complicated merge episode, does anyone have any final thoughts, anything we didn't cover real quick you want to talk about in 20 seconds? Alex, do you have anything? It's hard for me to think, Survivor, because i got to take a dump real bad. <laughs> all right, well. That seems like a good note to end on. All right, we're, we're going to end it right there. Good night, man.